Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about soft deletes. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how do you design your APIs to handle soft deletes? Well, um, usually I do it in the same way that I handle things like multi-markets or things like that when I don't have a one-to-one -one mapping between like because for all the people who may not work on international systems here in Europe we have a lot of different countries and unfortunately for us uh, there's a lot of differences in many cases between those uh, data structures that we need in order to represent things in different countries and so some companies do the thing that like they they sort of they move all their data to like they separate on market like the database on market and some do this like they combine the data into one database instead and there are pros and there are cons with both of those approaches uh, but uh, when I'm dealing with a situation where all the data is in the same uh, the same database and it's just a market thing. It's a similar sort of, situa sort of situation because you have some type of property that basically affects the way that the consumer of your API and even the programmers themselves expect things to work. Because as you can imagine, if you're gonna search for say products, well, the question is, do you want products for the entire system or do you just want products for a specific market? And the same thing goes for soft deletes. If you are, say, say that you have a bunch of orders and some of them have been deleted or, deleted or canceled, or well, if you don't have an effective way of dealing with the fact that you have, because when you're doing a soft delete, you don't actually remove the record, you just flip usually, uh, you can set the, I mean, some people use a boolean and I prefer to use a timestamp like deleted at or something like that. And when that is the case, you have to handle that somehow. And so this, uh, the thing that I usually do is that I create an abstraction layer for connecting to the, uh, to actually executing the query itself towards the end system. So what usually people will do when, like you probably, I mean most of you probably know about the MVC pattern and the model as you know is usually in that structure the it's the lowest denominator or like it's the it's the lowest level it's the database layer if or the connection between you your system and the database itself and so here is where i sort of use the same approach that i might have told you before about it's the same thing i do for like whenever I'm dealing with network clients or anything like that. I always create a base layer that's just handling like an abstraction that is the owner of the connection itself towards the uh, the, thing, the entity that I'm connecting to. So if it's a network, it's uh, an example would be in JavaScript. A lot of people use the fetch function or in libraries such as Axios or something like that. And I only do that if it's a front-end application, but if it's a Node.js thing or a server-side thing, I always try to wrap that functionality inside of my own abstraction. I call it like something like an API client, or in this case, it's going to be a database client or something like that, my own version. The reason why is because, and then I usually actually add a linter to my code, which abolishes the use, like the direct use of things like fetch, for example, for networks, or like using a raw model from Mongoose, or if you're using something else, right? Uh, the reason being because when when you treat that abstraction as the only abstraction, like it's a, it's an abstraction that creates a situation where you can't control the logic of how to query the database from a central location because that abstraction is in the library and you want to own that abstraction for things that are common to every quest request that you make. So in a network situation for example it would be logging of network requests or maybe you want to do metrics on the request or maybe you, like it's the same principle you use for CQRS or command query structures where you just have a f like a function that you call with some type of input parameters that executes the command. Now that is a little bit more abstract but the same rule applies here. So for example in my case with the markets so instead of 
having everybody basically have to create all of these different systems for how do I query specific properties on my data. Well, I usually add an options object or something like that where you can configure how the query should be run and that becomes the lowest level and that level that that's that's a very good example I think of separation of concerns. This layer all it's absolutely the only thing it has the responsibility of doing is to fire off whatever request you send to it with some enrichment from one single location and that me me means that I can take the raw query as the first input and the configuration object as the second one which I then can implement in one central location so an example would be if I wanted to support searching over multiple uh, markets as an example well then I can because then you can give you a property saying search all markets or I can say yeah these are the markets I want to execute the query over or like the results that should include these and so forth you can basically build build in filtering functionality at the lowest level abstracting that requirement away from the consumer of the API or the developers are going to use it soft deletes works in a very similar way where basically whenever you are executing a query you can in essence and have this abstraction to just take the raw request that the programmer inputted into the client and latch on that clo that uh, uh, that extra clause saying something like uh, you can well in pseudo language where you know created uh, uh, I deleted at is uh, and where uh, records uh, deleted at uh, field is null or something like that where you're basically just adding that on top of the query that they are executing because you don't want to be in a situation where every single programmer has to remember oh yeah we're doing software de uh, soft deletes which means that I have to remember to add that on t into the logic that I am executing but if you because if you put it that uh, if you just add a lot of another layer on top uh, that handles that for you no one has to duplicate that it's handled from one central location in practically the same way you do with things like as I said logging or uh, as I like to do with uh, like uh, network clients and things like that. So what I want you to take away from this is that my suggestion is that if you're going to implement soft deletes or anything like that, it's a good practice that I try to follow. I don't want you to go now and say that, oh yeah, I'm always going to create a client around everything that I'm ever doing, because as I said, like I only do this if I know that I have some very specific use case that I need to deal with and then all you really do is that you create a wrapper around the uh, if you're using like a like a, uh, like a DAO library or like an ORM or something like that you simply instead of using the direct model you create a wrapper around it that ha that simply latches on that common uh, logic on top of your queries so you don't have to worry so much that this thing is uh, so you don't have to re-implement it over and over because you're gonna forget I promise you you're gonna forget and by doing this you create a situation where there's one way to connect to the database and when you have that choke point or that bottleneck in the code that basically gives you a lot of a, you, you can do a lot of cool stuff with that just that little thing. I, as I said, I do the same thing for network clients and things like that, or REST clients, where you create a base layer where you connect, where you can control the call that goes out. Because when you do that, instead of having people use like the native APIs in the browser or something like that, you can actually do all kinds of things. You can enable debug mode to like just see like requests and so forth. You can add metrics. You can add custom headers that should always be there, so people don't have to re-implement re them over and over and over. But and that's why it's important that important to remember that, that sometimes you actually do want to wrap a native API a little bit and add some stuff on top, simply because it makes that central control possible. Because if you don't have that, you can't really do that in an efficient way and people have to repeat themselves over and over. That's how I would do it. Have a great day.